Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and the retro gaming market is finally getting a good old-fashioned goatsy, a good old expose. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you know anything about me, you know, in my gaming tastes, at some point I was in fact a retro game collector. In fact, I actually am a pretty big collector. If you look all the way back there, that's a PS4 library of games that I own, a small bunch of physical discs that I constantly buy. Now, I'm not here to invest money into these games to make like millions of dollars like 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road. There are far better investments. This is purely a hobby of mine that has stemmed from being a gamer. Now, for people who do retro video game collecting, it was a market that's basically like dominated by gamers, right? People who go to these flea markets, people who go to like random, you know, garage sales and pick up a few games here and there. You know, they throw a couple bugs down to pick up a cart or here and there. And that's pretty much how the market works, right? And uh, it's a pretty humble and it's a pretty cute hobby. And at some point, it wasn't terribly expensive to jump into. That was until a new breed of collector jumped into the mix. Now, the person that has broken this cherry, the person that has popped this hemorrhoid of an industry out, is Carl Jobst, a man that is known for collecting lawsuits like their Dragon Balls. I think 2021 is the year of, like, YouTuber investigative journalism. Me and Coffee, who were looking into, like, Save the Kids, Carl Jobst has been looking into, like, the video game retro market. And he's made a solid 50 minute expose that I really think you all should go and watch. The fact that it hasn't broken the million views club yet is almost astonishing to me. But basically, he pointed out some causal links between an organization that we looked at called WATA and a group called Heritage Auctions. Now, general allegation TLDR is that this guy, Dennis Kahn, the president of WATA Games, the grading company in this case, is apparently in collusion with Jim Halperin, the co-chairman of Heritage Auctions. Now, to understand, these are allegations. So again, nobody really knows if this is entirely 1000% true. Really why this is in the news at all is because Carl looked into a lot of the, uh, you know, press releases and various documentations and made a pretty compelling and damning case. Now you can imagine if a grading company, in this game WADA, right, that apparently grades these cartridges to a massive umpteen degree where, you know, a perfect cartridge will be giving like a 9.6 grade or a 10 grade or whatever massive amount. Now a graded cartridge costs way more than a regular cartridge. To understand in retro gaming, uh, you're selling either loose, which is you're not giving sort of like a, uh, you're not you're not giving a manual or a box or anything. It's a loose game. That's usually the cheapest, right? Then you have complete inbox, which is you know the game, the manual, and the you know the the actual box that it came with. Then you have graded, which is where like these companies come in. Now I have nothing against grading companies. You have grading companies for everything: cars, trading cards, uh, you know sports trading card, whatever you want to call it. There are grading companies for almost any asset out there. Games are no exception. So, of course, you have to look at these grading companies and, you know, they're just doing their job. But now it's really unethical if a grading company is colluding with an auction company. Because if you go to Heritage Auctions right now, you can type in NES game and you can find out that it seems like WADA, WADA, WADA is constantly mentioned over and over and over again in these auction pools. Now, what's really wild is if you look at this one, Super Mario Brothers, WADA 9.4 A sealed. So it's a sealed copy of Super Mario Brothers, which granted is rare, right? I mean, it's an old game. If you find a sealed version of a game that's over 20 years old, it's probably going to be pricey. Now, is it $30,000 pricey? That's a question. But this is this is a situation where the bid is running for about two more days. Now, there are other various cartridges that are open for bidding rounds. So you can see that you've got two bin. A game that's garbage, by the way, <laughs> is an 8.0 graded game. Now, not every single title here is like $30,000. For instance, Adventure Island 3, which is a 9.6 sealed water grade, is currently priced at $925. Right next to it is Adventures of Lolo for $310. So not everything in Heritage Auctions is like $50,000 per NES game. Honestly, if that was the case, this whole situation would be way more damning than it already is. Now, of course, because of these allegations, they actually had to respond to Carl's video and said, Heritage Auctions wishes it had been given the opportunity to respond before the video's publications because there are numerous misstatements of fact and inaccurate conclusions contained within the piece. Heritage strongly refutes any allegations that it or its officers are involved in shill bidding, market manipulation, or any similarly illegal legal or unethical practice. Now, of course, 
that's what any company is going to say. Again, if this is proven 100%, we're entering into a situation where this is fraud territory. Now to understand, in the beginning of the video, I showed you a bunch of like flea market collectors, you know, average gamers who were finding cartridges for pennies on the dollars. Now the actual collectors, it seems, have become stockbrokers, people who are looking at this as another speculative asset to blow up in price and trade around. Again, if these things are proven true, it goes beyond just being unethical. This is entering illegal fraud territory. And when the federal government is looking at you for fraud, that's not a good sign. But then again, that's why these are allegations, right? Hey, I hope somebody investigates. I hope somebody beyond YouTubers investigate into this situation because retro gaming, unfortunately, is being hijacked by individuals like this. This is why every one of us are getting priced out of one of our favorite hobbies. Retro gaming, in the shortest amount of time, has went from a hobby that was all about, you know, the average game collector jumping in to overnight becoming these millionaires jumping in to sell these cartridges for millions on the dollar. Now we're going to get to why that's the case too. To understand, let's go talk about a good parallel as to why these games really aren't A, all that rare, and shouldn't be as valuable as these massive million dollar price tags that you're seeing thrown all around. I guess one of the best comparisons that I can kind of make in this scenario is let's look at the year 2040. Now, I would say in 2040, the PlayStation 4 will be considered a retro gaming system, right? In fact, I think the PS5 will be a retro gaming system. I actually theorize in 2030, we'll have the PlayStation 6. And by 2040, the PlayStation 7 will have already probably been out, given how the life cycles of these gaming systems are running. Now, at that point, PS4 will be a retro system, and the games will also be I guess, retro as well. Now, one of the best, I think, game of the years, one of the best games that you can own on a PlayStation 4 is God of War, right? God of War is one of the most popular games on a PS4. Now, the point of this example is to tell you that these games are prevalent, is, is what I'm saying. God of War in 2040 for the PlayStation 4, if you look at the sales numbers for this right now, 12 million copies, and these are physical copies as far as my understanding goes. The game sells more digitally, I would assume, but the physical sales still go up in into the millions. Now, of course, if you go back and you look at Super Mario Brothers, you'll notice that its lifetime sales count is sitting at 40 million, okay? This is before the era of digital gaming. People were buying cartridges. Now, this game is common, all right? So for it to be jumping up into the, into the tens of thousands to the millions, even in pristine condition, as you can imagine, is, is quite insane. This is not a rare product by any imagination. Just like God of War will not be a rare product by the time Behind the PlayStation 5 and 4 become truly retro systems. So when you look at the retro market of then, and, and if the parallels draw true, and millionaires are taking advantage of individuals by telling you how rare some of these things are, always refer to how many of these games are in circulation. And this doesn't mean, of course, that these games won't ever be reprinted. There are actually plenty of games that get into the reprint category, whether they're greatest hits. In a good example, here's Metal Gear Solid Legend. Legacy Collection, an actual reprint of an amazing Legacy Collection, a, a set of ser a remasters, if you will. Basically, this is a bundle of all Metal Gear games mainline, with the exception of Metal Gear Solid 1 and Metal Gear Solid VR missions, which they only gave it to you in downloadable code. Pretty stupid. But this is a reprint. This is a re reissuing. So, at the end of the day, a lot of these games physically, most of them that are being hyped up right now aren't entirely rare titles. So, again, it begs the question, why? Why is the value so heavily inflated in certain cases? Now, right down, you can see that this person thinks they have fucking gold on their hand, okay? Because they're selling Super Mario Brothers NES CIB, which is basically complete in-box, so it includes the box, the manual, and the game, no revision A, hang tab, whatever, for $347. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't believe that this is $347, okay? In fact, right here, Super Mario Brothers 3 is being sold for $189, complete in-box. In fact, if you go to the previous sell right over here, you can see right quick this is not in the best condition possible so if they're trying to sell this off to you for about 274 american that's a problem all right the fact that they're not even giving you proper ship free shipping on that price is downright criminal of course because of how expensive some of these auctions go for you can see that the loose prices are even increasing like crazy again loose means that they're just selling you a cartridge and of course the price for this goes all the way up to like ten dollars the peak was at like seventeen dollars so the 
very first box that we saw on eBay wasn't actually a bad price, right? That was what we charted at. That, that's basically the average. Now, again, if you go to the closed inbox price, the complete inbox, you can see that regardless of quality, it seems from here, it is jumping up from $62, which is already egregiously expensive for this game, is jumping up to $285, at some point dipping down to $152, and then going all the way up to $243. Now, again, going back to the entire situation, when you look at God of War on the PS4, this is never going to be a rare game. There have been millions of copies sold and are in circulation right now. I'm sure in the future, like in 2040, a complete inbox, never touched, vacuum sealed version of this game can probably go for a couple hundred dollars. I understand the rarity in that scenario. You know, it's kind of like the trading card market, right? Like when you have certain trading cards that are low print, you know, actual rare cards, the price properly reflects it. Of course, even the trading card market and the comic book market has had this sort of infiltration already for a long time. But the general idea is rarity, yes, it does it does sort of correlate with how expensive something gets. But this should never be priced at hundreds of dollars. And of course, by 2040, we'll probably be able to see just how expensive this game can get. In comparison, actual rare games, for instance, like for example, I own Danganronpa Trilogy. Now, I want to state for the record that I'm not actually getting paid by Spike Chunsoft. You probably heard this game numerous times mentioned by me. It is one of my favorite visual novel games out there. Now, you can see on eBay, at least, right? And I'm using eBay as a quick example. There's obviously plenty of other websites, but eBay here is pricing this at around $81 brand new, $79, $82. So this is the average price. Now, if you go to other storefronts like Amazon, you'll probably see this for like two, $300. See, online shopping is kind of a hit or miss. Finding this game in public, I have tried numerous times, and it's not exactly the easiest find to get. It is genuinely a rarer release, all right? Compared to God of War's the earlier example, this one has had a lesser print. So, ladies and gentlemen, why are these games super expensive? Well, one of the actual apparent alleged causes is something called shill bidding. So to give you a quick example of how shill bidding works, all right, let's say that we have a game called Haze on the PlayStation 3. Now, Haze is not a special game. It's not even that rare. In fact, to be honest with you, it's an absolute dog water game. But Let's say we wanted to increase the value of this, right, artificially. So how it would work is we would open up an auction listing, right? And I would start selling Hayes at like $50. Now, what shill bidding means is that I have involved six more people into the thing. So let's say I've got five more people that I dropped in. These five people are all my friends, family, or people that are connected to me. So what I'm doing is I'm telling these five people to now bid on or bid on this auction. So now they're bidding. They're actually putting the price from this for $50. Somebody bids and, and they put the actual value at $70, then $100, then $500, then $1,000, then $10,000, then $50,000. Now, the entire point of shill bidding is that since these are all fake auctions, anybody's throwing whatever money they want. At the end of the day, the, the actual we're not going to pay this amount. See, the idea of a shill bid is that that we're trying to get the sixth person to jump in, another person, the sucker, if you will. Now, this sucker is probably going to be somebody that witnesses this auction. You ever look at eBay and wonder how, like, people are looking at, like, these games or like 80 people are watching this auction so as people are throwing money down a random person joins in somebody who has money somebody who does not have the expertise on what they're bidding on they'll look at it and say okay people are actually putting money down like tens of thousands of dollars so what this person does is then they throw a bid for fifty-five thousand. Now, at this point, the shill bidding can continue, but most likely it'll stop. Because once that sucker has thrown in the 55000 the auction ends, and you have now sold, for instance, Hayes for $55,000. Now, is this game worth fifty five? dollars No. Because when that person tries to then sell this game for like $60,000, they will realize that unless they also shill bid... This will not sell for 60k. Intelligent buyers will not go over here. So you have artificially inflated the price. Basically, it's a fr you can understand why it's considered unethical. And so what's allegedly happened is that this is thrown into the mix. Allegedly, there are claims that this is the reason 
why some of these games have been priced out to high oblivion. Now, you might be wondering, is this common? Do people do this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's a website known as PWCC, okay? These are people who deal with trading cards. So, for instance, you can see that some cards, like this 2004 UD Trilogy, Trimark 2, Michael Jordan, LeBron, James Kobe, Auto Slash 10, BGS, 9.5 gems, say that 10 times fast, is priced at $300,000. In fact, it's actually sold for $300,000. That is an insane amount. Now, is that card worth three hundred thousand dollars that's a different story okay but pwcc has been in the news for instance according to ebay they have actually been accused of shill bidding right so here's actually a policy from ebay themselves uh they actually are strictly against the idea of shill bidding okay but this is a copy of the notice they sent to PWCC. As one of the largest marketplaces, eBay has policies in place to protect our buyers and sellers. eBay is found on trust and we work every day to ensure a fair and positive experience for the entire eBay community. Cool. Recently, it was determined that individuals associated with the trading card seller, PWCC, have engaged in shill bidding which is prohibited on eBay. As a result, eBay has restricted PWCC selling privileges and listings effective today. Now, this has made the news understandably so. This is big deal, okay? This is actually, this is a very damning accusation. Now, if this is happening in the trading card market, it's not really out of the realm of possibility to assume that these massively inflated $2 million cartridges may potentially have some form of shill bidding involved again you know really think about it for yourself right out of nowhere in such a short amount of time the value on some of these assets have spiked to astronomical proportions i mean i'm just saying all right you know it's perception <sighs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think this video has gone on long enough, but I think my point sort of comes across, you know, every time I see these massively sold, you know, devices, massively sold cartridges, I have to talk about it because at the end of the day, this is something that I'm passionate about. I like the retro gaming industry. I like buying some of these older games. I do collect. Unfortunately, I've had to dip out of the market because the prices have jumped to astronomical values. Now, whether Carl Jopes video is actually going to cost some ruffles, like it is, it is like rustling some jimmies. But whether it's going to cause some price action towards some of these massively inflated numbers is a different story. But I'm glad that the word is getting out into the mainstream at this point. And these people need to be called out. Because at the end of the day, if there is shady actions going on between grading companies and auction houses, basically working hand in hand to inflate the prices to astronomical degrees, that is ruining the entire hobby for everyone else who is doing it legitimately. What is happening right now is this entire business business is getting hijacked by literal stockbrokers, by people who have no interest in the hobby other than finding a way to quickly inflate the profits and quickly inflate the value of certain devices, of certain products to make a quick buck at the expense of a group of people that have been doing this hobby for decades down the line. And the value of these devices, the value of these games, the value of these products is never going to be sticking to that value years down the road. The people that fall for it and end up believing they have some level of an investment will find out very quickly that they have bought, in some cases like Mario Brothers on the NES, one of the most sold games on that, pro on that actual game console, and then they'll find out years down the road when the values have to start coming back to normal that they really didn't put in a good investment. You honestly believe that $2 million copy of NES Mario is going to be worth $2 million down the road? No. The moment it's sold, it's giving the value. They're trying to increase the perceived value of that product. So everyone thinks they have gold on their hands so they can just keep selling more of these so they can go to more people into these auctions and basically spend a crap ton of money that is what i'm starting to notice from this situation it is wrong it is immoral and frankly i want this to sort of stop down the road because i'm a retro gamer i like playing these old games i like collecting them and granted sure i can play these games on an emulator but i do like the idea of owning these things physically and if I can't do that, it's a sad day, I would say. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. I am out.